Welcome to Real Vision Crypto. I'm Ash Bennington. Today, I'm joined by Moritz Haydn and Moritz Siebert. They run 2Quants.com, a quantitative trading blog that has expanded to cover NFTs. And of course, they also join us here at Real Vision, where they co-head our digital innovation group. Today, we talk about the Real Vision bot, community building, and digital assets. Uh, Moritz Siebert, let's start with you. Give us the backstory. Tell us about your background uh, and tell us about how you came together on these projects. Hey, Ash. Great to see you again. And thanks for having us on. Um, background story. I think uh, I ran into Moritz about six years or so ago. We were both working at a investment management firm uh, looking after quantitative trading strategies, which is what we do and enjoy doing still to the present day. Um, and then, you know, we started trading our own money. Um, and I know maybe it was a bottle of wine or two bottles of wine, but somebody had the idea of uh, starting a website and putting some of these strategies out there with the idea of, uh, you know, creating a blog and maybe a subscription service, a newsletter service and these type of things. So we put a lot of energy into setting up this website, twoquants.com, did everything proper, launched the newsletter and then figured out that, hmm, it's kind of difficult to get that stuff to scale. I mean, we did get, you know, subscribers and it went into the thousands, but as you know, there's only about one, two, maybe 3% of the people actually converting into paid subscriptions. So it's kind of difficult to really get that to scale. And we realized, okay, you know, what we should be doing is we should be making everything for free. It doesn't cost anything. Just get users, build the community enjoy building the community. And that felt so liberating because all of a sudden we had the freedom to no longer, you know, create a newsletter every month that had to be detailed on options and derivatives. We could do other things. And the first thing we did is we had a, a picture depicting Raul, which is now in his office and sometimes seen in the background, the race between the digital gold, which is Bitcoin and the physical gold, um, like a pop art type of picture. And we sold that through the website. And it became kind of like a bestseller. Uh, it was sold out. I mean, it didn't cost that much money. And then uh, Clever Moritz here had the idea of, uh, you know, making an NFT out of this. And then what happened is there's like one NFT came to the next and we have this often thing. I mean, we'll, we'll go probably in detail later on in this conversation. I don't want to steal Moritz's thunder on that one. But this is how it happens. So it's really been super fluid. Um, we're doing many things. We enjoy doing all of them. We're very busy. And uh, this is one of them. Clever Moritz Hyde and Moritz Siebert set it up very well. Tell us a little bit more about the journeys into NFTs. Yeah. Um, I mean, Moritz already started out very well. It was basically a space we discovered via Real Vision. I mean, we watched, of course, we are long-term subscribers. We watched Real Vision for some years. And then when the whole crypto boom happened, of course, NFTs were also in the menu. And we got interested right away because we are also into art and collectibles, also from an investment side. But it didn't really occur to us until this moment when actually we put out that image of Raul. It was a print, basically, and we kind of actually got asked on Twitter, is this an NFT? And I was like, okay, what does it take to make it an NFT? And I found out it was relatively simple to do a simple kind of version of an NFT out of it. And I did it at the same day. So basically people enjoyed having it at the same time. They bought the physical print, but they got the NFT delivered. And basically after that point of time, we were hooked and we kind of dug deeper into that area and kind of researched what does it take to do more NFTs? What are the contracts? What are all these technicalities around it? And yeah, actually we then witnessed in um, 2020 the, the real NFT hype uh, going on and in 21 it really took off right so that was a year when also this image basically became famous i would say we didn't do many nfts in between until actually end of 21 um that was a basically another coincidence when we decided to launch another image this ape with a gun above its head um as an nft which is now kind of the, the famous thing for our i would say two points slash real vision bot community so obviously, I love hearing about the role of Real Vision in your journey. Uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, the Real Vision bot and its relationship to the NFTs that you guys are working on right now. Yeah, that, that's a great start, actually, kind of because it ties directly into our current role at Real Vision. 
what we did with the Real Vision bot was maybe three years ago, um, as a subscriber, we found out like we have very limited time to actually watch all the videos that come out on Real Vision, but we also didn't have kind of a notification system that told us kind of who are the people on the show, what's currently airing, what is going to be released, what is actually the topic that's currently trending on Real Vision. And what we did, we uh, went out and I built a machine learning engine that basically scraped all the transcripts from the website, got them as soon as they were released, scraped them information such as in the beginning it was very simple, like what's the topic that is discussed, kind of who are the people appearing on the show so that I can have a simple overview on what's actually being released on the platform. So I can basically look and have the video for myself and watch it. And from that point on, it really kind of evolved into something because we also suddenly had access to all these historical videos on Real Vision because they all were there and Raul actually got an interest into the project and allowed us to use them all. So the first thing we as systematic traders did, we looked at all the historic videos from one specific series, which was back in the day called Trade Ideas, where basically people put out their best trade ideas and tried to gain information from them. So what we did in that sense, we scraped them for information, extracted information on the trades that people put on. And our theory at that point of time was like, if someone has a very well specified trade, so he's putting in not only like a buy order for a stock, but also a limit, kind of an execution price, what is the time horizon on the trade, that this person should perform better. And we went out, collected the data, scraped it, made a nice little paper out of it that actually proved our point that really these trade ideas which are specified that help people limit risk, which, which is something I would say relatively natural from an intuition. And uh, then that was how the journey into the whole revision bot really kicked off. Moritz Hyden, you make it sound so simple. We go out and we scrape the shows. But this is a huge <laughs> effort. You essentially ingested all of the transcripts of every Real Vision show into your artificial intelligence engine uh, and then began to analyze that data. Tell us what that involves uh, and how it works under the hood. Yeah, that's um, a lot of scraping and both of, of course kind of connection to the website or to the there is no central database. I scraped, first of all, from the website itself. The transcripts came back in the day in different formats. So they were partly PDF transcripts. So all of the stuff like typos, for example, were in there. There were some things in there, like sometimes the wrong person was mentioned in the interview. It, the tag may, might be wrong. The publication date might be wrong. So it's really, first of all, getting the data, bring it in a machine-readable format, correcting all the mistakes, um, aggregating it in a database where the engine can actually look at the data and really aggregate it in a way. Um, that was the first step, building a really nice database of what actually is on the platform. And that already proved to be quite interesting because, for example, we found interview transcripts which were in Chinese. I mean, for interviews by, I think, yourself and um, at back in the day, and the interview was clearly in English, but the transcript was in Chinese. And of course, you have to kind of account for these type of things. You have to deal with them because they kind of throw an error in your machine. Um, but that's how it actually starts. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.